राष्ट्रपति जी डॉक्टर शर्मा राज्यपाल श्री रेड्डी चेयरमैन मिस्टर इस्माइल एंड आदर डियर एडमायरर्स ऑफ स्वामी विवेकानंद मेनी ऑफ यू मे नॉट बी नोइंग दैट स्वामी विवेकानंद प्राइडेड हिमसेल्फ ऑन इंट्रोड्यूसिंग हिमसेल्फ एज द कैलकाटा बॉय the largest parliament of religions is being held in the city of calcutta to commemorate the centenary of the calcutta boys historic addresses before the 1893 world parliament of religions held in chicago held as the star of the parliament the swami had proclaimed before the representatives of 16 religions the gospel of harmony I hope you remember on this day 100 years ago Swami ji read out the paper on Hinduism In fact the paper was on harmony from the perspective of Hinduism His master Sri Ramakrishna used to say he is indeed a real man who has harmonized everything Swami Vivekananda was one such real man Very aptly, Romerola summed up Vivekananda's creative genius in two words: equilibrium and synthesis. Harmony was the main theme of his mission. In fact, he breathed the spirit of harmony. 100 years later, the Second World Parliament of Religions was held in Chicago between 28th of August and 4th September. 1993 with representatives of more than 125 religious groups and reiterated swami vivekananda's call for harmony and peace sri ramakrishna's experimental verification on the truth of god in various religions culminated in his unique discovery of religious harmony he made the cryptic statement as many faith so many paths profound in content and depth this thought wave of religious harmony rising at dakshinesha led to a quiet revolution that took place across india at the turn of the century it was a call to a new way of thinking about all religions not simply a call for any particular religion but a call for fellowship of faith the wave swept over the first parliament of religions when the world was hardly prepared to appropriate the grand message of harmony but it created robust optimism it provided promise of an enduring solution to religious strife through dialogue it gave birth to interfaith movement nonetheless during the intervening period of 100 years this world of ours has witnessed a big change man has almost conquered his external nature he is virtually his master but he continues to remain a slave to his internal nature to his puny ego with a very limited vision today man looks smaller indeed he has yet to learn to live a true man's life also he has to learn to live in peace with his neighbors individuals and communities on one side the world has shrunk to a global village on the other traumatic experiences of poor world wars threat of atomic warfare ecological imbalance increasing gulf between the haves and the have nots etc have made men restive the human development report 1993 of the uno in form 90% of the world's people have no control over their lives in spite of the recent changes around the world favoring market economies multi-party de- democracies and grassroots activities disappointment and anxiety are writ large on human faces all around the world during these years religions could not play their roles religion still continues to be misused by vested interests for their political ends against this backdrop we have to consider swami vivekananda's concept of harmony 
Here, harmony means agreement in relation. Philosophy as well as science strive for unity in the attempt to comprehend the diversity of things under general principles or laws. In this search, some went so far as to deny multiplicity of things and try to force some form of monism. Interestingly, the ninth verse of the Ishopanishad tells, quote, Into a blind darkness they enter who are devoted to avidya, but into a greater darkness they enter who engage in vidya. Shankaracharya, in his commentary, considered four probable interpretations of vidya and avidya. However, vidya in general means knowledge of Brahman providing a vision of convergence or unity, whereas abhidya means ignorance leading to multiplicity, diversity, variations, etc. The mantra seems to suggest that unification should not be overemphasized at the cost of diversity, for our seers had discovered that diversity in the creation was not simply a fact but necessary for individual growth and freedom. In fact, they put as much faith for unity as for diversity. Consequently, they shunned uniformity and homogeneity and advocate, advocated unity in diversity, allowing each to grow and flourish. This outstanding feature of Indian culture has been beautifully pointed out by Rabindranath Tagore in his poem Bharat Tirtha. Viewed from another perspective, some religions of the world seem to have favored exclusivism, whereas some others have promoted inclusivism. Some, still some others, showed a preference for pluralistic inclusivism. Contrary to this, religious pluralism acknowledges the vast range and complexity of differences apparent in religious practices, but at the same time, encourages one to accept the major streams of religious experience and thought as embodying different awareness of one ultimate reality. Sri Ramakrishna welcomed religious pluralism. A true hermeneutician in his practice of religious discipline, he upheld the value and sanctity of each tradition. He discovered that God was the golden threat which held together the diverse regions to form a garden, as it were. To promote religious harmony, he exhorted everybody to mix freely with others, when in their company, to be one with them and never to harbor malice towards them. But he insisted that in his personal spiritual practice, he must follow the discipline that was prescribed for him. As his master's voice, Swami Vivekananda preached the doctrine of harmony, but from a wider perspective. He wanted men to learn to live in harmony with nature, internal and external. In his perception, harmony existed among the arts, science and religion. His creative genius, his was creative genius, and it was all pervasive. He said, the divinity within is the common thread among all the human beings, be the Hindus, Mohammedans, Christians, Sikhs, tribals, or untouchables. Dogmas, sects, temples count for little compared to the essence of religion, that is manifestation of divinity in man, which is otherwise described as realization of God. Swami Vivekananda believed that the religions were not contradictory or antagonistic, they were rather supplementary. He denounced patronizing tolerance of another man's belief. But he emphasized that here acceptance does not mean conversion into another religion. Swamiji wanted that everybody of a religion must assimilate the spirit of the others and yet preserve his individuality and grow according to his own law of growth. In a multi-religious society, one has to appropriate and assimilate the spirit of other religions and convert them to suitable nutrients as the plant converts air, water, etc. as plant substance and grow according to his own law of growth. 
A truly religious person cannot be dogmatic. He keeps the windows of his religious life open, allowing other religions to blow freely, but making sure that he could, not, he could hold his own. This approach helps a Hindu to become a better Hindu, a Muslim a better Muslim, and a Christian a better Christian. This doctrine of harmony has immense potential for changing the destiny of mankind for the better. Though shrouded by thick clouds of challenging problems, the overall prospect is bright. This doctrine, this doctrine of harmony seems to be the only real solution which will be acceptable to all religious communities. We, the admirers of Swami Vivekananda, should respond to the great call given by the Swami at the Parliament of Religions, and we, the Indians, have a special responsibility. And I believe we shall succeed in our endeavor with the guidance and blessings of Swami Vivekananda, which he had promised. Namaskar.